basically when we are living with uh, chronic inflammation what will happen is our body um, will be damaged by the inflammation process um, eventually initially it might damage the cell healthy cell and eventually from a cell it will, it will involve the tissues and eventually involve the whole organ so this can lead to dna damage tissue death and internal uh, organ scarring as well and this is not something very good for our body conditions because constant inflammation chronic inflammations in our body eventually might lead to diseases for example like cancer like heart disease like rheumatoid arthritis like type 2 diabetes obesity asthma and also cognitive decline or dementia so all these are common chronic inflammations um, diseases which we are able to identify nowadays so chronic inflammation is actually one of the main cause of aging in human being and then because we are running a wellness and aesthetic clinic then we realize that when the patients come to us then they would like to reverse certain signs and symptoms of aging like for example jowling and then um, dark circle or uh, wrinkles and then all this happen it's because of inflammation which is happening ongoing in our body how to reduce inflammation in our body definitely number one identified to the root cause and get rid of it so we would like to reduce the um, chronic inflammations by as what we have shared just now reductions of three white white sugar white flour and dairy and then we also will, would like to reduce the type of food which is will trigger inflammations besides the three whites are like fried food which is introducing the trans fat to the body and then um, we would like to reduce the exposure to the heavy metal like chemical and hydrocarbon for example cigarette smokes alcohol and then uh, we also would like to identify what are the types of food which will trigger inflammation in the body and then by avoiding all those aller allergen or sensitive triggered um, food basically we will reduce the chances to trigger inflammation in the body avoid chronic stress is important as well and then we also would like to um, get the patients basically to help um, to drink sufficient amount of water three to four liters of water for certain individual but normally at least minimum 2.5 to 3 liters if the patient is not very active and then not to forget that the patients will need to reduce stress meditation is a good way yoga is also a good way and then we will also suggest the patient basically to optimize the way they handle stress as well so not to not only looking problem from one single direct angle but looking from a different directions because while looking at the issue we will be able to improve our way of uh, handling problem and reduce the stress eventually um, last but not least to get enough sleep i think seven to nine hours sleep is um, important for our body to heal and then usually for us to assess the patients whether they are getting enough sleep or not we will assess at their forehead area so for example usually when the patients come to us and then each patient we will we will have a photo sessions so of every single visit basically we will put up the patient's photo from the patient's photo we will be able to identify whether they are getting enough sleep or not if they are getting enough sleep their bone structure loss basically will not be that significant as uh, one of the questions that uh, um, the audience asked regarding the chronic inflammation um, speed up the aging process so if you are not getting enough sleep then tendency for us to get volume loss on the forehead will be very significant so if you have volume loss on the forehead what will happen is like a balloon if the volume reduces, the skin basically will become saggy 
then we will notice that the anterior cheek and then the gel area basically will be more prominent, more pronounced, and then they will look aged. So whenever we talk about chronic inflammations, how long will the chronic inf inflammations uh, subsided if we put it into actions to get rid of it? So generally, it's depending on number one. What is the signs and symptoms that patients is uh, facing? Number two, how long the patient has been encountered the issue? Number three, what is the main cause, which is the root cause of the issues? And then what are the possible or cofactor which making the inflammations prolong without a proper healing means that it's a delayed in healing process. And number four, which is the most important one, how willing are you to help yourself in overcoming the chronic inflammations? I think when we encounter um, chronic inflammations with our patients, the biggest challenge is not the root cause. The biggest challenge is not to overcome the sign and symptom. The biggest challenge is how willing or to what extent the patient's willing to commit so that we will be able to assist them in reduce the inflammations. So the durations of recovery, it literally depending on how severe the situations. Secondly, how willing the patient's willing to um, how committed the patient's willing to commit in reductions of inflammation. If they are fully committed, generally we will get excellent results. For example, I have a patient came in with um, overweight and then during the assessment, we noticed that uh, the things that troubling him is actually um, poor diet and then poor lifestyle as well. He literally sleeping every day, maybe two or three hours only because of uh, hectic uh, work and then significant stress as well. So when we are looking at his uh, body weight, which is um, percentage of body fat, which is exceeding like 40%. And uh, when we are encountering and then performing the assessment, we notice that generally the root cause, he came pretty early, what I would say, there is no significant long-term damage. So our challenge is only his lifestyle. So when we get him to adjust, to identify which are the type of food he, which he cannot uh, take, and he agreed literally to reduce it all. Secondly, he agreed basically to get back a no normal healthy lifestyle. So he decided every night I want to sleep seven to eight hours. And then thirdly, he committed that he will every day drink three to four liters of water and exercise walk that 10,000 steps a day. So within um, two months, his weight reduced almost like five kg. And then in four to six month time, literally we are able to bring his percentage of body fat back to normal. This is how committed a patient is. And with his commitment, we'll be able to get the result pretty fast. We do have patients that come to us and then get all the tests done. We, we are able to identify the root cause and then we are able to identify mm, these are the treatment plans that uh, we can share with the patients. So within the first three to four months, the patients are able to commit. However, fourth month onwards, after looking at the photo, looking at the assessment plan, we notice that, oh, there is improvement already. Then the patients go back to the previous lifestyle. Um, and then after that, she blamed that, okay, all this doesn't work. However, three months later, she came back with full-blown um, inflammation signs again. And then this time round, she said, okay, I would like to, I will do whatever things you suggest. And then from there, we work on. So with the commitment during the second phase of treatment, we realized that the moment when the patients commit, he, uh, she is able to get the result which she get uh, during the first phase within four months the second time he get exactly the same result within a month so that's the difference between committed and non-committed within the same patient itself so sometimes when we are talking to patients we are waiting for the right timing so that the patients will be able to get the get the idea that mm, most importantly is not what assessment that we have done most importantly is what do you want to achieve 
and how committed are you. So that will determine how fast you get the results.